but going back to school is bound to be a different experience for everyone. But parents and advocates who have kids with disabilities say there hasn't been a comprehensive plan to ensure the safe return of their kids, saying in these times of uncertainty, they're now being forced to take matters into their own hands. What can parents do in the face of all this uncertainty and chaos? Well, as always, we'll need to take things into our own hands. There are at least a third of a million students with disabilities in Ontario schools today. That's one out of every six. There were already significant barriers for students with disabilities prior to the pandemic. Now they've become more pronounced as questions are raised on if and how these students are being included in back to school plans. Parents are filled with uncertainty about their kids. How's this going to work? Will it be safe for our kids to go to school? Are the schools ready to make this work? Teachers, principals and education workers are all scrambling to be ready in time. In a live stream hosted by the Ontario Autism Coalition, disability advocates said parents are dreading that schools aren't prepared for the fall, saying there's been no direction from the province. The Ontario government has announced no comprehensive plan to ensure that students with disabilities are fully and safely included in the return to school or to ensure that any distance learning that continues this fall will be barrier free. There are a long list of questions on this topic, from transportation to challenges around wearing masks to whether new or previous accommodations and supports will continue to be provided under this new reality. What level of staffing will be available uh, to your child, including EAs and SNAs? And of course, within the pandemic, you know, that has a whole uh, additional layer, you know, raises a whole additional layer of concern uh, for us. I think one of the problems here is that schools don't yet have the answers. Also concerns expressed by advocate David Lepofsky, who says educators can refuse to admit students if they believe their presence will be detrimental to the well-being of other students. We have been concerned for a long time that it is disproportionately used to exclude some students with disabilities from school. They're essentially told, go home. A major source of frustration for those who experience distant learning at the start of COVID has been teachers using online platforms that create major accessibility barriers. This COVID has been a nightmare for everyone and for all kids. It's, it's had mental health impacts of varying sorts. And for some uh, kids, when in returning to school, it, it may well have affected some of their behavior. The advocates say it's important for parents to have these conversations with their child's school and teachers and update them on what's happened in the last few months, including details on educational and technological challenges, if any skills were lost or if there's need for further assessment and how they're developing in terms of social interactions during self-isolation. Parents need to give the teacher their own report card of how their student has been, how their child has been doing since the schools closed uh, in the middle of last March. And put together this information in a constructive way. School boards have been working uh, day and night round the clock trying to figure out what to do. Mm -hmm. um, and they are, I think, as worried as we are. And the coalition says these are just some recommendations to consider. Meanwhile, the province says they're funding Earmark's $10 million specifically to accommodate special education needs in the classroom, the most of any province in the country. You can watch the full one-hour stream on the Ontario Autism Coalition's YouTube page.